Okay, good morning. We're going to get started. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Phil Robertson. I'm the Deputy Director of the Asia Division of Human Rights Watch, and I'm going to be the moderator today uh, for this uh, effort to launch the Sombat Initiative and talk about the enforced disappearance of our good friend Sombat Sompon from Laos. Uh, I think most of you will be familiar with the story uh, as we approach the second anniversary of his disappearance on December 15th. That two years ago, uh, on December 15th, uh, Sombat was driving home uh, to uh, have dinner with his wife, Shui Meng, who's here with us. Uh, he was on a main road. He was on uh, Ta Dua Road, which is the main thoroughfare in Vientiane. He was stopped by traffic police. Uh, he went into the traffic police checkpoint. Uh, he came back out. Uh, his uh, car was driven away by someone else. Uh, he was uh, taken into a pickup truck and uh, driven away. And since then, uh, there has been no clear indication what has happened to him. We know of this because uh, of the quick thinking action by Shui Meng and the family uh, to essentially get access to CCTV footage of that area at the time that he was uh, taken away. And um, since then, uh, the government of Laos has maintained that they're uh, investigating the situation, that they're investigating this disappearance. But to be honest, uh, our assessment is that that investigation is dead in the water. And many people wonder whether it was ever intended to proceed or find anything in the first place. Uh, in fact, as we've looked going forward uh, at the so-called investigation findings, and there have been three updates that have been given by the, uh, uh, the police in Vientiane, uh, that actually we see the situation is regressing, or to look at it differently, uh, the cover-up is proceeding. Uh, the first updates, they, the police did acknowledge that, in fact, uh, the person who in the video uh, is Sombat Sompon. Uh, however, uh, in the latest updates, which is now over a year old, and in more recent statements, uh, the, the authorities are now uh, raising issues about whether that was Sombat in the video. So it appears that exactly at the same time that the international pressure is increasing to find out what happened to Sombat Sompon, uh, the uh, investigation is going backwards. So far, various different uh, proposals or offers of assistance by the international community, by various different governments, for instance, to look at or examine uh, the raw footage uh, of that CCTV uh, tape, uh, because the, the original footage has not been released. What, what we have is, was something that was taken, a, a, a photo of, or a video of the actual video being shown to the family members. Um, uh, that, you know, there's, there's been no access to that tape, which is a, a critical uh, point to look at in terms of trying to identify who the persons are in that video, what, who's, what the, the license plates of those trucks were, uh, and other key issues that have not uh, yet been revealed. So two years on, a very, very difficult situation, and today, uh, we have a, a, a panel to speak about this. Um, first, we're going to hear from Ankana Nilapejit, who's uh, the chairperson of the Justice for Peace Foundation and an executive boarder of AFAD, which is the regional organization that works on enforced disappearances. Next, we're going to hear from Sam Zarifi, who is the Asia director of the International Commission for Jurists. Third, we'll hear from Matilda Bogner, who is the regional representative for Southeast Asia for the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. And then finally, we'll hear from Sombat's wife, Shui Meng. So uh, let me turn it over to you all. And good, good morning, everybody. In the name of the families of disappeared person, I would like to say that enforced disappearance is a worldwide phenomenon. Asia is the region with highest number of cases 
reported to the UN working groups on infosters or involuntary disappearance. Since the working groups was created in February 1980s, more than 50,000 cases submitted, and more than 40,000 of these have not been clarified. In Thailand, there are 81 cases of enforced disappearance that still not clarified it <coughs> by the Thai state. The case of Somchai Nilapaitit is perhaps the most well-known enforced disappearance that had taken place in Thailand in the last decade. Somchai was a prominent human rights lawyer known for his work on politically controversial cases, including representing individuals accused of terrorism related offenses. He was the chairman of the Muslim Law Club and vice chairman of the Human Rights Committee of the Lawyer Council of Thailand. Somchai was abducted by five police officers in Bangkok on 12 March 2004. Ten years passed, it. his fears and whereabouts still unknown. Sombat Somporn and Somchai Nilapajit are not the only two victims of enforced disappearances. There are many others in Asian region who disappeared. It. But their mishaps were never mentioned it or received it any attention from the public or the government, who has the duty to ensure justice through a reparation. Worse, Asians seem to be tolerant in allowing these perpetrators to walk freely in our region. <coughs> what happened to Sombat Somporn and Somchai Nilapajit clearly shows what, hap what Asian justice system is low and unfair. Lack of time penalty and neglect the victim's rights to seek truth and justice. The failure of Asian justice system continuously allow perpetrators to run free above the law. On the way seeking for truth and justice, the victim families faced a lot of barriers, including the psychological trauma, the economics, social, and cultural lives. They are also under threats and intimidations because the perpetrators <coughs> sorry, are trying to silence them. This is most certainly happened in Thailand, Laos, and all Asian countries. Some families have to change their name and surname and move to other provinces to protect themselves for their stress. In Laos, the families are easily isolated. The regime has created such a culture and atmosphere of fear and insecurity that ordinary people automatically think that the disappeared person must be at fault. And if they associate with the family, they will also be at risk. <clears throat> so they do not get involved in any way. The families then do not have societal support to pursue justice. Most of them are left alone without any help or support. Thailand, Laos, and Asian countries still have no channel for families to access accurate information and investigation. They have no effective witness protection programs to guarantee the safety of the disappeared families during the long way of the struggle for truth, justice for the loved one. My experience in 10 years struggle for truth and justice in Thailand, I have tried it very hard to know the truth and to access to justice. But it is getting even harder given incumbent in situation. I have been through many things in my life, sorrow, disappointment, and hardship. 
but none of them has warranted for such extensive use of knowledge, patience, and tolerance like this time. In many instances, my request for help have been turned down by the authorities. It looms as an insurmountable obstacle for an ordinary person and women like me to reach out for justice and the rule of law in Thailand. No one knows how painful and traumatic the experience can be to bear witness the fact that a person who had done so much for, for many people to even not be bestowed with a graveyard where his descendant could hold a service in memory of him. Above are the important reasons that for the Sombat initiate, initiative to be started. So Sombat initiatives is like the solidarity movement. We have the objective, we have two uh, objective. First, to seek resolution to the case of Sombat Sompon disappearance. Second, to carry forward Sombat idea and ideas. We have uh, very honored people who will be uh, the founder and the board members of this movement, especially uh, Walden Bello, he's a member of the Philippines House of Representatives. Paul Emil Dupo, the political advisor, European United Left, Nordic Green Left. We have uh, Mari Hebert, Chair of Southeast Asian Studies, Center of for Strategies and International Studies. And we have Lee. Lennon, the senator for New South Wales Australian Green Party. Charles Santi Erko, member of parliament, Democratic Action Party, Malaysia. And especially, we have Er Shu Ming, spouse of Sombat Somphorn, and I'm one of the board committee. Um, we will help each other, we were keeping in our mind how we can help the families to struggle for justice. That uh, now they cannot have any movement to do this in their own country. So much initiative will continue movement to put pressure on the government of Laos and the Asian to protect the victim of the victim families and to return truth and justice and reparation to them. And to do everything to make sure that some bad idea and ideas will not be disappeared. Last but not least, I want to extend my solidarity to all relatives of the disappeared, especially to me, to urge you all to fight until the end to reach out for truth and justice in the midst of violence and intimidation. I believe that no one is too small to live with honor and dignity. I believe that through the wounds in our hearts are invisible and untouchable, but they do tell us the stories of trauma, pains, and so many injustice inflicted on us all. And owing to the wounds, we shall continue fight for justice. And I believe that in the midst of losses and pains, through the course of our fight, we have woven our fabric friendships, solidarity, and mutual sympathy, something that will certainly last and be inseparable over the time. 
We have to break the wall of silence and fear to stop the culture of impunity. This is not just for us, but for hundreds of others who have suffered similar injustice. I thank you very much. Thank you, Kun Ankana. Uh, now we'll hear from uh, Sam. Thanks, Phil. Um, thank you, Kun Ankana. Uh, it's terribly disappointing that, that you're here. I have to be uh, honest. And in fact, uh, I'm very grateful for all of you for uh, showing up today. But it's terribly disappointing, again, to be facing another anniversary. Uh, without clarity about the fate and whereabouts of uh, Sombat Sompon. A disappearance, what we call an enforced disappearance under international law, is a particularly vicious kind of human rights violation because it combines so many, so many elements of different human rights violations. This is a particular crime under international law. It's been defined <clears throat> as the abduction or detention of someone by or with complicity of agents of the state. And that's a, that's a crucial point. And without acknowledgement as to the fate and whereabouts of that person. These are unfortunately precisely the elements of the violation that Ning Shui Ming and the family and friends of Sombath are facing now. What we know from the CCTV footage that was made almost accidentally available to the family is that Sombath was stopped by government security agents. He was last seen at a police checkpoint and has not been seen since. The government of Laos has signed the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, the International Convention Against Torture, and it has signed, but it hasn't ratified, the International Convention Against Enforced Disappearances. Under all of those international obligations that the government of Laos freely entered into, there is an obligation on the part of the government to investigate this violation, to bring those responsible to account, and also, crucially, to ensure that the family, that the survivors, that the friends have a right to the truth, that they know what has happened here. The last time that the government of Laos has offered a, an official statement about the state of its investigation was, I believe, in June of 2013, 18 months ago now. We know and we will hear that Somba Sompon's family have requested this information and have not received it. However, the government of the Lao PDR in response to international pressure has said that it is investigating this case as it's necessary. This is absolutely not enough. As Kunan Kana pointed out, Sombat Sompons is not the only enforced disappearance in Southeast Asia. And unfortunately, one of the elements that unites many of the cases of enforced disappearance in, in Southeast Asia including that of Somchai Nilapajit, including, unfortunately, more recently, the abduction of Billy, a Karen activist in Thailand, is the absolute failure of the governments to carry out a proper investigation. It's not enough to just say, we're investigating. It's not enough to just say, we've looked at one set of closed circuit television uh, tapes. To be honest, in res based on our frustration with this response or non-response, the International Commission of Jurists asked an international investigator, 
with decades of work in terms of the, with the police. Michael Taylor, uh, who's worked with the British police and then later uh, with various international investigating commissions, including most recently the commission in Syria, to take a look at what the Laotian government has publicly said about this investigation. The result is a report that we're releasing today. I hope that copies will be available for you all to look at. They will be available on our website, icj.org. And the report is called Missed Opportunities. And I think the title really says it all. From what we can see, the investigation by the Laotian authorities have been wholly inadequate. And this is not an episode of CSI Vientiane. This is not something that requires massive resources. There are some basic things and basic recommendations that we have included in our report that we hope that the Laotian government will be able to respond to, that they will be able to explain whether they have uh, taken these actions, and if not, why not? And if not, we hope that they will look to international assistance to be able to carry out these very basic, very basic investigative actions. And again, it's important to point out that this is in fact the government of Laos's obligation. It has a duty to carry out a proper investigation. I'll share some of these key investigations with you and I think many of you will think that these are quite basic, quite pedestrian. And that's why in fact it's so disappointing that we have not seen the official investigation, as far as we know, include these. I admit that I hope that we are wrong. I hope that the Laotian government will respond to the ICJ and will say, we have actually carried out all of these steps. But unfortunately, I don't think that that is the case. You've heard a lot about the CCTV footage that shows that Shreem that Sombat was stopped and that his car was taken away. One of the things that is unclear to us is whether the Laotian government has actually asked for CCTV footage from other, other sources, other sources along that road. As far as we know, this has not happened. Another major source of technical information is to look at cell phone data, mobile phone usage, from the police and other officials who were at the checkpoint. This is something that international investigators have been using for over a decade now. And again, it's something that should be done immediately for any kind of investigation of this sort to get what they call data dumps from uh, mobile phone towers, uh, cells that are close to the area of the violation. So they, they can identify who was in touch with whom. I should point out that for, we have experience of this in Thailand from the case of uh, Somchai Nilapajit, where in fact it was the cell phone usage and the fact that the police who were responsible for stopping Somchai had been in close communication with one another and with higher ups, including all the way up to the prime minister's office. So this is something that there is regional experience in already going back quite a few years. And we do hope that Laotian authorities have taken advantage of this experience. And if not, that they will do so now because that information is still available. But there are other even more basic actions that we don't think have happened, that should happen. Has the government actually gone and conducted what we believe, what, what is called, what investigators call a house to house or a shop to shop investigation? going literally down the street and asking people if they saw anything. Did the government take out or put out information on public media, in newspapers, on radio, on television, asking for people for information on this case? As far as we know, that hasn't happened. And again, uh, there is really no reason for, for this not happening. Uh, and the failure to carry out this investigation properly 
casts serious doubts on the good faith of the Laotian government in carrying out and in meeting its international obligations to investigate a violation like this properly. When we asked Michael Taylor to look at the publicly available information on this case, his view was that this case remains eminently solvable. This is a case that can be solved using the equipment, the procedures currently available to Lao PDR and certainly within the region with an easy access. And so we hope that with this report, the ICJ has provided some recommendations that will allow the Lao PDR to carry out a proper investigation and some benchmarks for assessing the behavior and the conduct of, of the Laotian government in terms of meeting its international obligations. At the end of the day, what is crucial is for the Laotian government to be able to share uh, with the family of Sambath all of the information that they can to satisfy their right to the truth and, of course, to justice if there has been a crime that has been, uh, that, that has been committed. There is absolutely no justification. There is no regional tradition or custom or practice that justifies this. The statements of the Laotian government that they are conducting this investigation in the Laotian way is unacceptable. There is no such, there is no such uh, approach to policing and to investigations and to human rights uh, violations. And we hope that uh, by raising these cases, by raising these issues again today, almost two years after Sombath was last seen, that we'll be able to re-energize this investigation and push for some truth and some accountability. Thank you very much. Great, uh, thank you, Sam. Now we're gonna turn it over to Matilda Bogner. Thanks, Phil. Um, and uh, I have to say that I'm both honored and saddened to be here today. Um, as was said by others, it, it is a real pity that we do actually have to be here today to, to discuss these issues. Um, our office, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, has been following the case of the disappearance of Sombath Somaphon um, for the last two years since, since it happened. Uh, we've been following it as closely as we can uh, and, and raising it with the authorities in, in Lao PDR as well as uh, making public statements about it. On the 21st of December 2012, our High Commissioner made a public statement raising his concern for the safety uh, of, of Sombath, um, believing that his abduction may have been related to his human rights work and his work as a, a high-profile civil society uh, leader. The, our High Commissioner urged the authorities to do everything possible to ensure that he is found safely and unharmed. That was uh, two years ago. Our High Commissioner, again one year ago on the anniversary, the first anniversary of uh, Sombath's disappearance, made another statement. Um, saying that uh, he continued to be she continued to be concerned and that there was some indication of new information that Sombath had been held in police and military custody immediately following his disappearance. Uh, the High Commissioner appealed to the government to strengthen its efforts to undertake a transparent and thorough investigation and to devote all available resources to ensure Sombath's immediate and safe return to his family. Unfortunately, that has not yet happened. As we have heard, enforced disappearance is a very serious human rights violation. There is a convention, the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearances, uh, which is one of the nine core human rights conventions uh, that outlines the uh, elements of, of the violation and how serious it is. Lao PDR has signed that convention but has not yet ratified it. 
Um, the first article of the Convention outlines that there are no exceptional circumstances in which an enforced disappearance uh, can be justified. It cannot be justified even in a state of war or for when there is internal political instability or any other public emergency. There is no exception, there is no justification ever for enforced disappearances. The Convention also goes on to outline that if in a country it, uh, enforced disappearances are widespread or systematic, that that could in fact constitute a crime against humanity. So the, co the, the Convention does show how serious a, a, a human rights violation it is. Um, uh, under UN human rights mechanisms, a number of them have taken up uh, the case of, of the disappearance of, of Sombath Somfor. Uh, the special procedures, which are independent experts that are appointed by the Human Rights Council of the United Nations, um, have taken up his case. The Special Rapporteur on Human Rights Defenders, the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Association and Assembly, and the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression and Opinion uh, have taken up the case directly with the authorities in Lao PDR and have uh, called on the government to carry out a full investigation and to provide information regarding the progress of the investigation. Also, the working group on enforced disappearances, which is also one of the special procedure mechanisms appointed by the Human Rights Council, uh, has taken up the case. If we look at the history of, of the working group on enforced and involuntary disappearances, we heard a little bit about it before, um, but in terms of, uh, of Lao PDR, uh, it has uh, taken up a number of cases in Lao PDR and unfortunately shows that the disappearance of Sombath is not the only case in the country. Uh, over the history of the working of the working group, there have been eight cases uh, taken up by, by the working group of enforced disappearance in Lao PDR. Um, the working group does collect information from a variety of sources and then presents that information to the government of Lao PDR um, and, and seeks uh, updates on how investigations are going. And one of the primary tasks of the working group is to assist families in determining the fate and whereabouts of their family member who has disappeared. In terms of the eight cases that the working group has reviewed, uh, the first one was registered in 1993 and it dealt with a leader of a repat repatriation group who reportedly left his residence with government officials in order to discuss uh, where, where people who were returning to Laopedia could live. He never was seen again. Unfortunately, the case was discontinued uh, by the working group in 2006 because they were not able to continue their, um, their contact with the source of, of that information. However, the actual case has not yet been resolved as far as I understand. The second group of cases was a group of five people, Lao students who were a part of a movement for democracy who in 1999, 1999 participated in peaceful demonstrations in Vientiane. After participating in peaceful um, demonstrations, they were arrested. Um, the case has since been clarified, although it was six to seven years later, in 2005-2006, uh, information was received by the working group that four of the five men were currently were detained at that time in prison in Vientiane, and one had passed away in September of 2001. There are currently two open cases that the working group on disappearances is, is uh, looking at. One of them relates to a case from 2010 in which Miss Kingkao Pong, Pongsley uh, was reportedly arrested in November 2009 uh, by the secret police near Pong Hong. She had been traveling to the, from the city of Talat to Vientiane uh, and disappeared. That case remains open. 
The second case is the case of, of uh, Sombat. The working group and the special rapporteurs on human rights defenders and freedom of expression and opinion have also submitted an urgent appeal directed to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Lao PDR in relation to Sombat's case, urging for investigation. The information that they have received from the government is similar to that which has been included in the three police reports uh, and does not provide a significant amount of information or concrete progress in identifying either the whereabouts of Sombath or the alleged perpetrators involved in, in the enforced disappearance. Um, another UN human rights mechanism that uh, in which this case has been raised is through the Universal Periodic Review. Lao PDR is due to be reviewed under this mechanism on the 20th of January next year, so in, in a few weeks' time. Uh, the Universal Periodic Review is a review in which all countries that are members of the United Nations have their human rights uh, situation reviewed uh, by the Human Rights Council once every four and a half years. Uh, Lao PDR was first reviewed in 2010. The second review is the one on 20th of January next year. Um, civil society and other, other stakeholders are able to put information before the review, as is the government of Lao PDR, and all information from United Nations sources is also put before the review. So uh, Sombath's disappearance will be a part of the documentation in that review. Uh, the government, after the first review, accepted a number of uh, recommendations, including allowing media and civil society organizations to undertake education and advocacy, monitoring and reporting on human rights issues, uh, the ratification of the Convention on Disappearances, and the development of a national human rights action plan, including uh, allowing civil society engagement on human rights issues. Uh, it is questionable whether those, uh, those recommendations have been implemented so far. In, in the context of uh, Sombath's disappearance, we also are concerned that it has had serious ramifications and ongoing ramifications in terms of how civil society is able to operate in the country. Uh, civil society has operated under difficult conditions for, for a long time, but the disappearance of Sombath has made that all the harder. He was a high-profile um, civil society uh, person who had trained and inspired many young civil society uh, workers within the country. The disappearance has sent a very uh, frightening message to, to others within civil society in, in the country. And not only that, we are concerned that a number of laws and draft laws have been uh, put forward since Sombath's disappearance, which would further restrict the operation of civil society in the country. Um, in September of this year, the government passed the Internet-based uh, Information Control Decree. Uh, the decree has, uh, uses terms which are very vague. For example, paragraph 1 prohibits the dissemination of false or misleading information against the party or government. Paragraph 3 prohibits the promotion of untrue information with an aim to undermine social unity and solidarity. Paragraph 5 prohibits the disclosure of national secrets, military secrets, or other secrets as indicated in legislation and regulation. The decree also lists a number of sanctions for those who contravene the decree, including re-education, fines, and criminal prosecution. This raises serious concerns in terms of freedom of expression and the freedom for civil society to operate in the country. The government is also going through the process of amending the decree on associations. That decree also would propose to further restrict the operation of civil society, allowing them only to work as service providers, demanding that they report their activities to government as well as their foreign income that is received. It also prohibits NGOs to move against the constitution or law and conduct their work against good, the good tradition of the country. 
It provides for both criminal sanctions as well as uh, the dissolution of, of NGOs. These are concerns that, that we have and they're all in, in the context of uh, Sombath's disappearance, which has made it much more difficult for, for civil society to operate in the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matilda. Now, uh, uh, Shui Good morning, everybody. First, let me thank the organizers for this press conference and also to all the preceding speakers, to Kunanjana, to Sam, and to Matilda. It is for me so, so important to know that Sombat's disappearance two years ago has not been forgotten by his friends, his development partners, and also international human rights organizations. It gives me and my family some comfort that you care and that you will continue to care and will support me and my family in my search for Sombat and his safe return. Today marks the 726th day, four days short of two years that Sombat has been taken away from me and my family. I can tell you that even after 726 days, the shock, the pain, the anguish have not lessened. In fact, the anxiety and the despair grows with each passing day. Some people sometimes ask me, do you think somebody is still alive? My answer is, I can only hope that he is still alive. For without that hope, I will not have the strength to get up each day. That is the cruelty of enforced disappearances. With other human rights violations and abuses, their families suffer great anger and grief, but at least they know what happened to their loved ones. With enforced disappearances, there is only uncertainty, only anxiety, and only despair. Kunankana Nilay Pajit here understands that very well. She has gone through that much longer than I. She has gone through that over 10 agonizing years. And she has reached out to me from the very beginning and offered me emotional support and advice. She has continued to be a great source of inspiration to me. Kunangana, I thank you. And I also thank all of you present here today. You are letting me know that I am not alone. And for that, I'm truly grateful. Today, in presentation of Sam Sarifi from ICJ and from Matilda Bogner from the UN Office for Human Rights, their presentations and their explanations actually help me understand the substance of international legal instruments better and the support that Sombat's disappearance can rely on for justice. They have also explained very clearly what state parties are obliged to deliver on as duty bearers under the various UN treaties. And they have also explained clearly to me as victim what recourse I'm entitled to as a right holder. So for this, I'm really grateful. In the ICJ report that Sam talked about, it has laid out a number of 
professional investigative steps, which can be used to expedite and sharpen the investigation of what happened to Sumbat on the night of 15th December 2012. And hopefully, if those steps are taken, Sumbat can be traced and can be found quickly. As an ordinary person who has very limited legal and policing background, all this is actually quite new to me. And I assume it's also quite new to many people outside or inside Laos. I sincerely hope that the proposed steps suggested in the report will be taken seriously by the Lao investigative team and they will follow the fresh ideas and renew their effort to find the whereabouts and Sombat and bring him home. I also want to take this opportunity to thank Kun Ankana Nilai Paichit and other illustrious personalities who have all agreed to be members on the advisory board to the Sombat Initiative. I thank them for their continued com commitment of their time and energy to support this initiative. As explained by Kun Ankana, the Sombat Initiative will continue to seek resolution to the case of Sombat's disappearance and to carry forward Sombat's ideas and ideals for a more equitable, inclusive, and sustainable future for his country. I hope other people who know Sombat and who have worked with Sombat and knows what he stands for will join this effort to find Sombat and to keep his vision alive. As for me, as Sombat's wife, I will do everything I can towards achieving the goals set out in the initiative. I will continue to push for resolution of his case. At the same time, I will also try much harder to ask for support of Sombat's friends and associates, especially the many, many young people he has helped train over these years to share their thoughts and experience of what they have learned from Sombat and what aspects of Sombat's ideas that they now use and apply in their life and in their work. Members of my family and I have also started to collect and organize Sombat's writings, speeches, interviews, photographs, video documents, and notes that he, have, he had left behind. This is not an easy task, for as with very creative and very visionary people, Sombat is not very systematic in keeping his files and his notebooks, either in physical or in electronic form. Nonetheless, some work has already been started and we hope to continue this. Working on the Sombat Initiative will hopefully help me deal with my loss and pain in a productive way. It is not that the loss or the pain will go away. It never will. But it is one way to do something concrete and something meaningful. It's like Kun, what Kun Ankana said. We still carry the wounds, but we must let our wounds help us to carry on and to seek justice. Finally, I want to thank you all for coming and for your support. And I continue to keep faith and hope that the Somba's case will be resolved soon and that Somba's vision and life work will be continued through the Sombat Initiative and it will continue to inspire young people, especially those in Laos and in the region, to work towards. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we're now going to go to questions. Uh, 
I'd like to ask actually that journalists uh, be the first group that can ask questions. So uh, this is of course a press conference. So uh, there's a mic in the back. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, please proceed there. Uh, give us your name and also uh, uh, your affiliation, uh, the organization you come from. Uh, yeah, please go over to the mic. Jerome Taylor from AFP News Agency. Um, I just wanted to check with you, Matilda, if possible. You mentioned the case of a second Lao national that's open uh, and is a missing persons case. Could you give us the spelling of that person's name? And also, are there any other further details you can give? Um, yes, the uh, second case that's open is Miss, it's, the first name is K-I-N-G-K-E-O. And the second name is P-H-O-N-G-S-E-L-Y. Um, she was reportedly arrested in November 2009 by, the secret, by secret police agents near Pon Hong, P-H-O-N-H-O-N-G, while she was traveling from the city of Talat, T-H-A-L-A-T, to, to Vientiane. Th that's what's on the public record, and that's what I'm able to share at, at this point. Okay. Questions, please? Floor's open for anybody, then. If we please go, go to the mic. Good morning. My name is Evelyn Serrano from Asian Forum for Human Rights and Development, or Forum Asia. Matilda made mention of the UPR submission uh, for the second cycle for Lao PDR. And uh, we brought copies of the document that shows the, the CSO, or the civil society submission, highlighting there the Sombats case. So if you are interested, we have copies for you. We are also coming from uh, the Sixth Asian Human Rights Defenders Forum from Manila, which just took place a couple of days ago, where one of the highlights was the discussion of the Sombat case. And that uh, assembly, composed of more than 150 human rights defenders, from 22 countries in Asia uh, highlighted the shrinking space for civil, for civil society, NGO, for the NGOs and human rights defenders and the problems encountered by human rights defenders in the region and uh, made calls to governments in the region, firstly, for example, to investigate human rights violations, including enforced disappearances, uh, extrajudicial killings, the killings of journalists, for example, in the Philippines, and also many of the cases where there are arrests and detention, including here in Thailand. It also called on the different stakeholders here and authorities, particularly the Asian governments, the ASEAN and its counterpart in South Asia, and other sectors, other stakeholders, including the UN. So this is a very important uh, event for human rights defenders, and I think it symbolizes the very great need for protection for this sector in our society because, uh, as, I, as had been said, we don't want more Sombats and more Somchais to, to be victims of human rights violations taking place in the region. And we hope that uh, the calls that had been made by the representatives of the human rights defenders in this assembly would be echoed throughout the region and elsewhere where violations are taking place. So if you want copies of this uh, Manila Declaration, we also brought some, some copies with us for your reference and dissemination. Thank you. Thank you. 
normal. Hi, uh, Nirmal Ghosh from the Straits Times. This is addressed to Sam and Matilda, actually. You had, uh, you listed a, a, a bunch of conventions and, treat and, and so forth, and you mentioned that uh, Lao had signed on but not ratified the convention against enforced disappearance. Now, can you explain to us, you, 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 in this context, you said they have an obligation, the Lao government has this obligation to explain. Can you tell us what happens when a government does not fulfill, fulfill that obligation? I mean, what kind of censure is it exposed to? Where, where does this censure take place? What, what is the leverage that the, say, international community or inter international conventions have? Thanks. The, the outcome of this, and including, for instance, the uh, Universal Periodic Review, uh, Nirmal is uh, presumably going to be uh, recommendations by other states to the government of Lao PDR about how to uh, improve its compliance with the uh, obligations that it's taken on. Uh, we expect that some of uh, Lao PDR's um, friends, uh, donors in the international community will uh, condemn their inaction. I, I expect certainly, I, I believe the European Union, possibly some of the other major donors to uh, raise the case and to criticize the government for failing to do anything. But beyond that, of course, international law does not have any more powerful mechanism. Uh, I think in some specific cases we may see governments uh, consider sanctions or using economic leverage. Quite frankly, I'm not sure that that is uh, necessarily on the table here, although it's something that I think uh, certainly has been raised and should be raised by anyone in the international community that is cooperating with the Laotian government, which is that for all the international assistance provided to this government, is it meeting its obligations? Uh, and if not, why isn't it? And I think that's something that certainly the ICJ and other international organizations have raised. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree with Sam. The international human rights legal system does not have a strong enforcement uh, system. It is a voluntary system. So it is a matter of continuing to review the country, continuing to point out where there are shortcomings and trying to find uh, leverage behind that. But it's not like uh, an enforceable system where particular sanctions come into place. But it is an important system because it does um, allow light to be shed on, on what is going on and that allows a whole range of people who are concerned about human rights to rely on that information and to continue to raise it with, with the government. Can I just add? However, having said that, there are certain crimes that are considered crimes under international law, and torture is one of them. And it is the obligation, it's the duty of every country, anywhere, to prosecute, investigate, and, and punish those who are found to have tortured other people. That's called the principle of universal jurisdiction. We have multiple cases around the world where torturers are being uh, prosecuted for actions that take, took place in another country. And if, at some point, there is an indication that there was torture here, then certainly we will pursue uh, that kind of claim against the perpetrators wherever they are in the world, no matter where they go. Let me, let me just add one thing also to this, is that, of course, um, the issue of international reputation uh, is a significant one. Um, I, I don't think that the Lao government ever anticipated uh, that two years on, uh, that every meeting they have with international diplomats will have the issue of Sombat Sompon raised. I don't think that they expected that 
for instance, at their annual Downers Roundtable that took place in Vientiane last month, that uh, the Sombat Sompon issue would be prominently raised again. Uh, they are, I think, quite concerned, and, and what we're seeing in, in an effort in Vientiane to sort of bring down a wall of silence and keep people from speaking about this is a, uh, a reactive sort of back to the caves mentality by the Lao leaders to try to weather a storm that they didn't anticipate having uh, to deal with. And in this instance, what we're looking at is the international pressure connected to publicity, connected to the kind of uh, things that the Sombat Initiative will be able to do by continuing to bring uh, uh, friends and allies of Sombat uh, from around the region, around the world, to basically be able to say, we want to know what happened, and we're not going away, and we're going to continue to be here at your door until we find out. Floor's open. Any, any, there's an announcement uh, by the youth group, I think, is going to make an announcement. What? No? Yes, we have a youth group who is, uh, who is helping support uh, the Sombat Initiative. Of course, you know, I think uh, Laos is actually uh, one of the countries that has the, the perhaps the largest percentage of young people as a, as a percentage of the population of any country in Southeast Asia. And uh, we're very happy that they're uh, supporting this initiative as well. So please. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Aria, and I'm from one of the members of Sombat Sompan and Beyond Project. We believe that Sombat's work, it's very inspiring to a lot of us. Many of us have never met Sombat Sompan, but because of his work and what he believes in, in his, his idea of, like, peaceful world and happy world for the Lao youth. I think we, a lot of us who, especially of many of us who live in the Mekong region, we share the same idea of a peaceful society. And so to mark the second year of, we're still calling to ask many of our friends of where Sombat is, we came with a campaign to say, imagine there's no abduction because we don't want to see any more enforced disappearance. We don't want to see any more missing friends or family or people who we love or share our idea of inspirations. And so we, we want to go beyond just oh, what is happening to some, but what's happening to our society and what's happening to our world. And so um, for this occasion on December 15th, which is Monday, are having another like a forum talk on peace and we are asking friends and family of three very significant human rights defenders which includes friends of um, Sombat Sompon and family and daughter of um, the human rights lawyer Som Chai Nila Paijit as well as Billy to come and talk about you know what what is these significant people like what they what do they believe in what what are the world that they share? What kind of like love and support that they want us young people to see in the future? And so it's going to be a talk, like a positive thing, to talk about the future that we all want to see and share in our dreams. And so um, it's going to be on December 15th from 1 to 4 p.m at the Student Christian Center by the BTS and Ratchatewi, not too far away from here. And um, it's going to have a talk, and we're going to screen a little short documentary called Unjust. We also have a little short clip about the work that we're trying to raise during the past two years, along with many of other youth groups. And so um, I have a flyer. Or you can go on our Facebook page, which is Sombat Sompon and Beyond Project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, any, any, any further questions for the panel, please? My name is, my 
name is Thawee Porn from Russia Thai. Uh, I'm very interested in the situation in Laos. Um, and I understand that the disappearance of some bats send a frightening message and create climate of fear for the CSO workers in Laos. Can you, anyone of the panel explain this more in details? Thank you. Um, Sombat is a very prominent civil society and development leader in Laos, as many of you have, many of you know, and who have worked with him also understand his work. He has worked over 30 years on issues of sustainable development of environmental protection. The way he work has been very, very inclusive, uh, non-confrontational, and always supporting and encouraging cooperation between civil society groups and the government partners, knowing very well that they should not, and anyone who works for the good of the country should not try and do it uh, in an isolated manner. He really believes in the concept of participation. That was why he named the organization he founded, the Participatory Development Training Center. And his approach is always that of coming to consensus. Or if there are disagreements, then work out the disagreements, but always using nonviolent means and always trying to work peacefully. That is a principle that he has kept throughout his life, reflecting the horrors of war and violence that he and his family have experienced growing up during the war years of Laos. He always does not want to be confrontational. So when Sombat was disappeared, it became like a real, first of all, a shock and a real mystery to many people. Such a gentle, peace-loving, and um, person could be disappeared. It sends a message to a lot of young people and people working at the community level in civil society to start questioning where is the line that they have crossed or would cross. Because there's no clear line as to what is legitimate areas of work what are considered sensitive or illegal or illegitimate areas of work. This is why people are so fearful. And as a result of Sombat's disappearance, many civil society groups who have been previously trying to find out what are the challenges and problems that local communities face including areas such as evictions because of um, investments by foreign companies or land concessions, issues related to freedom of worship, issues related to environmental pollution that have affected some communities. Many of the civil society groups have now stepped back. They don't know whether continuing to work on these issues will bring them trouble. They just try to do work, uh, self-censor -center, and self-regulate their scope of work. So now many people who had joined civil society groups, some of them have actually resigned. They don't want to work in this area anymore. 
They prefer to work in the private sector, joining companies, or hopefully also try and um, work uh, in the government service, because that would be safe. And it's very clear, Matilda has also mentioned that since Sombat's disappearance, there are due two decrees, which have been most prominent decrees and open decrees that state that uh, the government would uh, have a decree to monitor social media use and also can take action to prosecute. There's also the uh, decree to review the um, work of the NGOs, their registration uh, process, the monitoring of the receipt of foreign funds in support of their work. So this sends a message, clear message, at least to the people in Laos, that there are certain areas which could lead to um, threats or risks to their personal safety. Um, and so people prefer not to, not to do anything which is considered controversial. But nobody actually knows what is controversial because the lines are not clear. Mm. Somebody throughout his life thought he wasn't working in non-controversial areas. He wasn't taking up any political cause. He wasn't challenging the government. He had no intention to enter politics. And when that happened to him, people say, if this can happen to Sombat, this can happen to any one of us. And the following conclusion is, if nobody can help Sombat, nobody can help us. This is why Sombat's name is never mentioned in the press, never mentioned openly. All the articles which have been published, all the petitions which have been submitted to government, not one word has been published in the Lao media. Uh, I would like to add a bit more. Uh, I think that uh, the climate of fear is not happened only in Laos, PDR, but it happened in all the Asian countries. From my experiences as a victim of enforced disappearance, I can say that when my husband disappeared, all of his friends and colleagues ran away from our family. Even the relatives, the very close relatives, one of some Chai families asked me, are you sure you want to fight with the police? And you know that the perpetrators try to make the person who disappeared to be the bad person. It shows in the front page of the newspaper that some Chai Nilapajit is the bandit lawyer. So, why the family have to survive? Why all our children have to go to school, to the university? We face a lot of difficulties. We have to, we, we have questions from many of our Thai colleagues and friends. How can you go to school and answer that how your father is the bandit lawyer. You know, it's, it's really traumatized. And when the family was left alone, it's really difficult for us to fight for justice and continue our struggling for truth and justice. If without the support of our uh, friends from outside the country, including the international community. So that uh, I think it's very happen. It's the reason why we have to 
support the families of victims. I often ask that by the government agencies, why you not forgive and forget and have your future with a beautiful future? Uh, I have uh, a lot of money for compensation, but what for? How can we forgive? Why we not know the truth? And we not know even who we should forgive. So I think it's, it's very important issues. So the only thing that will make the families to be strong is the strong support from our colleagues and friends. If it cannot happen in our country, the support from outside the country will be really helpful to us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. Um, thank you very much for coming. Uh, on behalf of the panel, uh, we appreciate your interest and concern. Uh, for Sombat Sompon and for all the victims of enforced disappearance uh, in the region. And uh, we look forward to continuing to talk to you about these issues and ultimately uh, find a solution where we hope that Sombat Sompon can come home. Thank you.